Okay, we're back. Uh, let's pick up where we left off with the slideshow. And I just talked to you about the sort of timeline of the Ramayana. To give you some historical context, um, Hesiod's poems and Homer's epics, the Odyssey and the Iliad, were probably written between 800 and 700 before BCE, before the Common Era. So that's around 700 years before Valmiki's poem. Okay. Um, again, the oral tradition goes back to around the same time, but the written versions of Homer's poems and Hesiod's poems are actually kind of pretty close to the earliest written versions of Genesis that we have or of the, of the, of the, of the Hebrew Bible. Valmiki's poem is later, but both the Greek and the Hindu oral traditions date back to around the same time. And most scholars believe that these two cultures and oral traditions share a common origin, as I, as I shared with you in the notes, dating back to a more primitive but thriving civilization in what is now the country of Ukraine. So that, I've given you a, a kind of map of the influence of that earlier culture from U Ukraine and the, 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 the influence that they had on language, but also on storytelling and the oral traditions. So this is an hypothesis called the Kurgan hypothesis. I think that's the name of one of the people who um, first proposed this, but it's based on evidence of language transmission and cultural transmission. And so you see in pink is the region uh, that is now Ukraine in the Caucasus mountains, north of the Black Sea and, and, and near, oh, the, so to the, to the west is the, the Black Sea, to the east is the Caspian Sea. Um, and uh, it was a very fertile region, but at some point people started migrating and they brought their traditions, their re religious traditions and other traditions. Uh, they brought their language, their stories with them. Some of them migrated north and west into Europe, but many of them uh, headed uh, in this direction through the Balkans and into what is now uh, uh, present day Greece. Many of the people migrated into Turkey uh, but some of them migrated through Central Asia into Iran and the, the, the Persian Empire uh, arose out of the, this migration. But many of these people migrated all the way into, into northern India. And so this is interesting. One civilization with um, similar customs and linguistic traditions and storytelling traditions. Um, so it's not surprising that we see similarities, for example, between the stories of Homer and the stories of, uh, for example, the Ramayana. They both have scenes of uh, the hero stringing the bow in their house. Um, that's one small example, but there's lots of uh, tropes or similar um, structures to the stories. And that's interesting. And that supports the Kurgan hypothesis that the reason we see similarities between these stories uh, is that they come from peoples that migrated from the same place around 350 before the sorry around 3,500 before the Common Era. It's thought that these migrations began around then, and so then we see um, a couple thousand years later the the beginnings of these of these epic oral traditions in both Greece and India. Um, so. I want to think about the language first. Okay, so um, the the people who migrated in in these in these different directions brought their 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 linguistic traditions with them, and so this is a a, a family tree of the Proto-Indo-European languages, and they all trace back right to the to the to the early linguistic uh, um, the early languages of of these people here, um, and so you see uh, one branch in the family tree is the, the Latin languages, the Latin languages, and Latin gave rise, ancient Latin gave rise to French, Catalan, which is uh, like Spanish, Portuguese, Italian, Romanian, all of these languages come, come from the ancient, the ancient uh, Latin language, which itself traces back, uh, according to the Hergen hypothesis, to, to, to an early, earlier civilization. Uh, another branch in the family tree is Greek, okay, in modern Greek. And over here, another branch in the family tree is Sanskrit, okay? So Homer's poems were written in ancient Greek. Uh, uh, the Ramayana was written in ancient Sanskrit. 
um, which gave rise to modern Hindi and Urdu. These are the two languages that are spoken, uh, to, two of the many languages that are spoken in India today. Um, but all of these languages, the, the Latinate language, the, the Greek language, and the Sanskrit, and their modern uh, versions, trace back to a common origin. Uh, and we, here's a more elaborate tree, okay? Uh, there's a lot of information here, but where are we? We're, we're down here, uh, modern English. Uh, whoops, uh, modern English we can trace back to uh, Anglo-Frisian and West Germanic. Uh, it's a Germanic language that ultimately split into the West Germanic. Uh, over here we have Norse and Swedish, Norwegian, the Scandinavian languages. But the Germanic language itself owes its origins again to this earlier civilization that kind of came out of what is now Ukraine. But we also, it's all sort of one family, a family of languages that, again, I talked about the Latin family. Uh, here's a family that, that traces itself into the Baltics, so Polish and Russian and Serbo-Croatian. These Celtic languages, these are peoples that headed north toward, toward what is now England and, and, and Ireland. The Greek uh, family is fairly small. But over here we have quite a large family, the Indo-Iranian family of languages, right? They all come from the same common origin. So the Indic gives rise to Sanskrit and modern day Bengali, Hindi, Urdu. Uh, the Iranian branch, right, gives rise to modern uh, Farsi and Kurdish, right? These are an, an earlier sort of Persian languages, okay? So this is a pretty elaborate family tree. There are languages that aren't on this tree because there are languages in the world that obviously don't come from this common origin. <laughs> but many of the languages, uh, at least in the West, but also in, 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 in India and, and the Middle East, uh, have a common origin. So here's an example um, of uh, declensions of the English word I bear, the English verb I bear, I bear, he bears, we bear, you bear, they bear. We have the Greek and Latin and Germanic and Slavonic equivalents, but here's the Sanskrit, okay? Barami, Barasi, Barati, Baramas, Barata, Baranti. You notice the, um, the declension uh, form is very similar to the Greek and the Latin form, okay? Uh, because they're all similar languages owing to a common origin. Um, I don't know if you find languages as fascinating as I do, but uh, there you go. Okay, one last uh, little piece on language. This is Sanskrit here. Um, this is how it's written, and these are the syllables, or this is the kind of um, phonetic sounding out of the of the Sanskrit, and then over here a kind of a description of what it sounds like. So like the N Y in canyon, yeah, canyon, uh, like the T in tub, ta. Okay, so we go through different sounds. Now you do have in your um, text um, some Sanskrit words. And so um, this is not a complete list of consonants or, uh, or, or sounds, but this is a, a, a partial list. Uh, I think um, there's also some um, in the beginning of your text, the first few pages of the text, I believe there is a, 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 um, a guide for how to pronounce some of the sounds, as I recall. Um, maybe I'm wrong about that. But if you're interested, I can I can provide you with that. <laughs> no, maybe maybe not in this in this edition, but in some editions of the Ramayana, it gives you uh, it gives you a guide for how to pronounce certain certain words. Okay, and but okay, so let's move on to the story of Rama and Sita. And here we have the first image. I know I promised you many images. Here's the first uh, image of uh, Lord Rama and his wife Sita. Um, and I just, uh, let me pause here and we'll do the last video. We'll just focus on the story itself and lots of imagery. Okay. <laughs> 